Now we're going to talk about the radial nerve tension test. This test is not contained within the clinical prediction rule for a cervical radiculopathy. However, if you suspect a cervical radiculopathy, this test is still indicated because they can still have radial nerve tension. Other indications for this tension test include supinator tunnel syndrome, de Quervain's tenosynovitis, and also following traumatic brain injuries. Oftentimes those individuals will have nerve tension. Now the first step of the radial nerve tension test is the same as it was for the median nerve tension test. You're going to firmly depress and hold the patient's scapula on the test side. However, in the median nerve tension test, I was actually facing the opposite direction. I was facing the patient's head. It's actually easier to do the radial nerve tension test facing the patient's feet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my palm like that against the table and use my forearm to block the patient's scapula just like that, okay? And then from here, I'm going to passively move the patient's arm through this following progression of positions. I've already done scapular depression, I'm blocking it currently, so I'm gonna move into wrist and digital flexion. And what I can essentially do is just have the patient actively make a light fist. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have her make a fist, and then I'm gonna bend it into flexion, as you see, right there, okay? I'm also gonna ensure that her elbow stays extended. Elbow needs to be straight in the radial nerve tension test. And then I'm going to internally rotate her shoulder with the elbow straight. So we'll see that. Elbow straight there. And to internally rotate the shoulder, essentially what I'm doing is I'm making it to where her knuckles actually point out this way. So point out towards my mouse over here. When I do that, she's now internally rotated. Okay. In other words, the palmar aspect of her and points out this way. So I've got elbow extension, I've got shoulder internal rotation, and I'm also going to induce a little bit of shoulder extension. So I'm actually going to allow her arm to drop a little bit downwards towards the floor. Okay. That's what you're going to see right there. So here's the shoulder abduction right there. And let's say about right there is where she experiences sufficient nerve tension. Now, if we're only concerned about simple nerve tension or adverse neurodynamics, right, a positive test is just going to be an increase in familiar nerve symptoms in the ipsilateral shoulder and or upper extremity, basically her right arm. As long as she's feeling nerve tension, well, she's got some degree of adverse neurodynamics. But if we're specifically looking for symptoms of a cervical radiculopathy, we need to involve neck movement. So after achieving sufficient nerve tension at any point in this progression above, we're going to ask her to side bend her neck away from the test side. That would be contralateral cervical side bending. That's what she's going to do next. You can kind of see it there. If her symptoms increase with contralateral cervical side bending, that constitutes a positive test ruling up cervical radiculopathy. Then I'm going to have her perform ipsilateral cervical side bending. So bend it toward the test side, as you see right there. And that theoretically should reduce symptoms. And if it reduces symptoms, then that's in accordance with a cervical radiculopathy. So let's take a look at this one more time in real time. So there's my depression of the scapula. I'm going to have her make a light fist. That gets the digital flexion. And then I'm going to bend it into wrist flexion. Keep the elbow straight. Turn her palms outward. That gets me shoulder internal rotation. Let the arm fall down a little bit. That's the shoulder extension. And then moving into shoulder abduction. Once she has sufficient tension in the nerve, contralateral side bending, so bending away from the test side, should increase symptoms if it's a cervical radiculopathy, and bending toward the test side should reduce symptoms if it's a cervical radiculopathy. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.